Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journey channel. Today we're going to be creating a crazy, crazy braid using lots and lots of bright, bright colours. So I'm starting off in my large dilutions journal, just creating a background. I knew on this page I wanted to use some printables, so i just come across some printables from Michelle Grant Designs. Um, I think the printable set I'm using is one called Bonkers, which was designed by Tammy Killinger, I think. I do apologise, Tammy. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce your last name. Um, so they're the, just these really wacky, cute, funky characters that are just crying out to use bright colours on. So um, once I got my hands on them, I just printed them out onto regular printer paper and cut out around them. So the great thing is about these um, printables is that um, you get about 8 or 12 images in the pack but they are already sized for you. So there's some that are A4 size, there's some that are A5, some are A6 um, and there are a few other different bits and pieces. And it's not just one one image for the whole pack so I think there's three or four different types of portraits in this um, in all different sizes. So it's I think it cost eight Australian dollars um, it's obviously available for everyone to, to purchase, so you just do the, the conversion and eight dollars for the rest of the world isn't very expensive at all. So um, yeah, I'll leave the details for Michelle in the description box below. So I wanted to put in a busy background. I wanted this to just be crazy in what I was doing. And you can see I've sort of left a patch of colour because I knew I'd be putting a printable over here somewhere and I was just trying to save myself the time and effort of actually having stenciled the whole entire thing if I didn't have to. So, um, you know, sometimes sometimes I just do and then stick the printable over. Sometimes I actually think ahead and think, oh, you don't actually have to go that far, Eve. You can, you can um, save yourself a little bit of time and effort and bother. So you can see my printable doesn't exactly go to the, the edge of my page. So I'm just using a white Posca paint pen to um, extend my image slightly and then just using a black pen to fill in the missing lines. So I'm just following on the lines from the drawing itself. Um, it's really, really easy. So, you know, I don't have to think about what patterns I'm doing. The patterns are already there. I'm just extending them out until the, the image is finished. The stencil I've used in the background, I think it's a Julie Bolser Designs from the Crafters Workshop. So I've got a feeling it's something lace, fractured lace possibly. I can't remember it. I bought it a long time ago. Um, but it's a lovely repeated stencil. So now I'm just going in with some white pen in the background just to add some detail. There's so much detail in that little image that I wanted to sort of capture that on my background as well. Um, and I've started doing this a lot with my stenciled images. I just, you know, sometimes I just want the stenciled image in the background as part of the background, but sometimes I want the stenciled image to be part of the design. And when I want it to be part of the design, I like to do some pen work over the top, partly because it helps me feel that I'm involved in the design process as well. You know, I'm doing this extra line work over it. I'm adding something to this stenciled image. It's not just someone else's design that I've just stuck on my page. So you know, I probably overthink things <laughs> when I'm doing stuff like this, but that, that's where my brain goes. Um, but you'll certainly see in the close up at the end, you know, what an effect it does have by just doing this little bit of extra detail work and I'm not being careful with how I'm drawing around this you know it is fairly rough and ready I'm just following the lines there and if I go over the edge well I go over the edge um, I'm not too fast so don't feel it has to be perfect because it's probably not going to be especially if you're tracing around a line so I thought for my image because I had such a bright background that I would use these watercolours and oh my goodness they're bright. These are handmade watercolours I think by Shimmer Drops. They're either made by Shimmer Drops or handmade designs both of which are on Instagram. Um, but there are lots of companies that are doing um, fluorescent watercolors um, I know Art by Marlene has a range as well you could use um, 
acrylic paint to do it. You could use um, Posca paint pens that are neon. But basically, I'm just playing around with neon because I love neon. So this is not specialized watercolor paper. This is just regular computer paper. I was actually really surprised by how well it took the watercolor. Um, it didn't wrinkle or bump, um, buckle up. Um, I'm, it's not particularly watery, I have to say. Like I'm obviously putting some water onto the, the palette themselves, but I'm also not saturating the page with watercolor, so that might be why it's it's taking it fairly well. But as you can see, they're just beautiful, beautiful, strong colors on the page. But as I said, use any color medium that you've got. It doesn't have to be watercolors. I just found with the watercolors, it was really fast and easy. And one of the real benefits I found doing it was because I'd printed out my image with a laser printer, it was acting as a resist. So I could basically just paint over the lines. Um, and because it had the toner on the page, it was kind of acting as a little barrier. So it wasn't bleeding into the next section which was really, really handy because the brush I'm using isn't really thin. Um, it's quite a chunky brush, so I was actually able to work, obviously not this quickly in real life. This whole page took me about an hour and a half to do, so I have sped this up, up quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> but because it's very repetitive, I'm pretty sure you can sort of work out what I'm doing as I go along. So I'm just going in and adding colour here, there and everywhere. Uh, I also, in some areas, once it had dried, gone back in and added some other colors over the top so you can sort of see in the green areas and um, those pink areas I'm adding some of the blue and some of the orange over the top just to sort of add a little bit of detail once I'd finished I thought I'd go for a neutral color on her face I'm not sure I was happy with this decision in the end but it is what it is just ended up looking a little bit murky um, I think I should have stuck with the um, neons. So once I've finished that I'm then just going in with a paint uh, a white pen and then I gave up and went back to my standard Posca paint pen um, to put in some extra details. So the reason the gel pen wasn't working very effectively was because my page was still damp um, the gel pens work really effectively over really dry media. If I'd left this for 24 hours, it would have worked perfectly. But because I'm not very patient, it um, was just that little bit too damp for it to really work. Whereas paint pens, again, don't particularly like too damp a surface to work on. But, you know, they work a lot faster than, than the gel pens. I then decided I would put a little bit of the um, Stubula or Pencil around the outside of my image just to push it out from the background and you can sort of see how that sort of dulled down um, the background a little bit so it stands out. Then I've gone in with my paint pens to write my quote over the top. So again this is you know making work for you but I find that I can relax so I can put a movie on in the background and sort of chill out and do these bits and pieces. I started off with a white paint pen just to sort of do my spacing. Then I've gone in with another white to um, make it more opaque. And now I've gone over with the pink. Now the reason that I've done the three coats is because if I'd just done the pink straight away, um, you probably wouldn't see it as well. Having the white underneath really helps pop it out from the background. Once I've done this, I'm now going to have to do something to really bring it back from the background. So I'm using my black pen to draw around it. And I'm actually drawing within the um, pink and going around the entire letter, which isn't something I usually do. Um, but for this case, I would, uh, it worked. Um, and it just helps pop it out from the background. I also decided I wanted to make sort of... Sort of marquee letters with putting some of the turquoise in the background just because I wanted to be as strange and as colorful as possible. So again you can stop at any stage. You do not need to do nave and do everything in the kitchen sink. You know, see what I do and then decide to stop five steps before me, that's fine. 
I just tend to take it to the nth degree. Now I'm going back in with the white pen, which you might think, oh, would you just put the white pen down? But what I'm doing is putting a drop shadow on, and you can see that helps push it out from the background a little bit. So the drop shadow is going on the bottom left-hand side of all my letters, and um, it's just a really quick and easy way to help your letters stand out. So this is the entire page. It did take a while. Um, it's one of my longer pages I did, but it was one of those pages I didn't mind doing it because it was very repetitive. The individual steps were really easy. It was just repetitive and there was a lot of them because it was quite a big area I was working on. So please, I would encourage you to have a go. Check out my description box below to find the link to Michelle Grant Designs um, if you're interested in the printables. She's got lots others there too. Um, and until next time, bye for now.